Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing two muscles which are located in the dorsal foot compartment. Now, I realize that this video is sandwiched within uh, the playlist where we cover the anterior leg compartment, lateral leg compartment, and so on and so forth. However, these dorsal foot muscles which are listed right here, are corollaries of two muscles that we see in the anterior leg compartment. So let me do a brief review of a couple of muscles that we have here in the anterior leg. And those are extensor digitorum longus and extensor hallucis longus. So first of all, hallucis refers to the fact that this muscle is going to insert on some part of the great toe, also called the hallux, or we commonly call it the big toe. And that's this muscle in purple, extensor hallucis longus. If we look at this muscle, it's going to have its origin on the middle one-third of the fibula. So its origin is actually going to be uh, deep to these muscles. We can't actually see it. But notice in purple, it extends distally uh, down the leg, across the ankle, and we actually see it insert on the base of the distal phalanx of the hallux, or the big toe. Recall that the big toe, or hallux, only has two phalanges, unlike the other digits, two through five. It has a distal phalanx and a proximal phalanx, and so the extensor hallucis longus inserts on the base of the distal phalanx of the hallux. We'll come back to that in a few minutes. The other muscle in orange here is the extensor digitorum longus. This one has its origin way up here on the superior two-thirds of the fibula, and we see its fibers run down. It's going to cross the ankle, and then we see that it actually divides into four separate tendons, and each of those tendons goes to one of these digits, two through five. So we have one tendon that goes to digit two, one to digit three, all the way to the little toe, digit five. And with extensor digitorum longus, these tendons are going to insert on the middle and distal phalanges of the lateral four toes, two through five. So remember that each of those toes, two through five, has three phalanges. Proximal one down here, a middle one or intermediate one, and then a distal phalanx. And so extensor digitorum longus tendons insert on the middle or intermediate and the distal phalanges of those toes, two through five. Now the reason these two muscles are termed extensor digitorum longus and extensor hallucis longus is first of all they extend both of the toes, and we covered that in the previous video. They extend the toes. Extensor digitorum longus extends the digits two through five. Extensor hallucis longus extends the hallux, which is the great toe. But the longest comes from the fact that these muscles span all the way from the tibia and the fibula here in the leg and then make their way down to the toes. In the dorsal foot compartment, we have these correlating muscles, but they're much shorter. And what we see is that both of their origins are actually just in the foot. The calcaneus recall is a tarsal bone. It's actually the heel bone. If we look at this picture of the foot right here, so the calcaneus is this tarsal bone that's beneath the ankle joint. So this bone is completely within the foot. This is not any part of the leg. And so because these two muscles do not have any attachment point on the leg, they're purely within the foot, they're much shorter than their longest counterparts. And so they're given the term brevis. And brevis, again, means brevity. If something has brevity, it's short. So these are shorter muscles. And there's two of them and they each correspond with one of these two muscles, EDL and EHL. And those are extensor digitorum brevis and extensor hallucis brevis. Now let's cover extensor hallucis brevis first. This one's a little simpler. Okay? This one, again, originates on the calcaneus. We see that muscle here in yellow. It's really going to originate more on the medial side. Okay? And it has one tendon that goes to the hallux. Now, extensor hallucis brevis, it inserts on the base of the proximal phalanx of the hallux. If we look at extensor hallucis longus, notice this one inserted on the base of the distal phalanx of the hallux, whereas the brevis form inserts on the proximal phalanx. So notice that the extensor hallucis brevis and extensor hallucis longus have different insertions. Now, why, you ask, am I mentioning that extensor hallucis longus and extensor hallucis brevis do not share a common tendon? 
Well, that's because extensor digitorum brevis and digitorum longus do share common tendons. Okay, let's actually go here and take one more look at extensor digitorum longus. Okay, this muscle, again, it's going to extend down into the dorsum of the foot and branch into four tendons. If we look at these four tendons, there's one to each toe, two, three, four, and five, and specifically they're inserting onto the middle and distal phalanges of each of these on the dorsal aspect. So the, this part here where they're branched, these are the tendon parts of this extensor digitorum longus muscle. Keep that in mind. When we look at extensor digitorum brevis, what we see is they insert on the long extensor tendons of digits two through four. So what are long extensor tendons? These tendons right here are the long extensor tendons. They are the tendons of extensor digitorum longus. In other words, we could rewrite this as the insertions of extensor digitorum brevis are the tendons of extensor digitorum longus, but only on digits two through four. So extensor digitorum brevis will actually have three muscular parts, and each will insert on one of the tendons for toes two, three, and four. In other words, extensor digitorum brevis has an insertion on EDL tendon number one here on toe two, EDL tendon number two on toe number three, and EDL tendon number three, which is on toe number four. Extensor digitorum brevis does not have an insertion on the tendon of EDL that goes to the fifth toe, which sometimes we call digiti quinti. It's Latin, it means small toe, okay? It does not insert on this tendon, only on tendons of EDL that go to two, three, and four. And so they share a common tendon. And so in that way, extensor digitorum brevis is gonna work synergistically with extensor digitorum longus, all right? Now in terms of the innervation of these two muscles, they're both innervated by the deep perineal nerve or deep fibular nerve, uh, which recall comes off of the common perineal nerve, which then comes off of the sciatic nerve. The action of both of these muscles is going to be extension of the toes. However, extensor hallucis brevis only extends the hallux, whereas extensor digitorum brevis extends digits two through four. And the blood supply to these muscles is through the dorsalis pedis artery. Remember that in the anterior leg compartments, the anterior tibial artery. And the dorsalis pedis artery is really just a continuation of the anterior tibial artery. Because as the anterior tibial artery is moving down the anterior leg, once it crosses the ankle joint, that is the uh, tibiotalar joint, it pretty much changes names to dorsalis pedis artery. Okay? And so because these muscles are in the dorsum of the foot, this artery is going to supply them. Okay? So... Hopefully this video made sense and you learned a little bit about the two muscles here in the dorsal foot compartment and how they relate to extensor digitorum longus and extensor hallucis longus in the anterior leg. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.